In this sequence of art lessons, we're going to be learning about Vasily Kandinsky and the style of art that he used. And today we're going to be focusing on who was Vasily Kandinsky. Vasily Kandinsky was born in Moscow in Russia on the 4th of December 1866. The pictures above show Moscow today. So just pause the video and think for a moment. Think, what do you think Moscow looked like when Kandinsky was born back in 1866? So almost 150 years ago. Kandinsky went to art school in Odessa, which is in the country Ukraine, which was at that time part of Russia. And as a young aspiring artist, he was inspired by the work of Impressionist painters, such as Claude Monet. Here we can see an example of Claude Monet's painting, Le Porte de Trevi, and a early Kandinsky painting of a Rotterdam sun. Pause the video for a moment and have a look at these images. What can you see? How would you describe the artist's techniques? What similarities do you think Monet and Kandinsky had at this time in their careers? Now, as Kandinsky travelled through Europe in the early 1900s, his style began to change. So we noticed that just before, he had been influenced by the style of Claude Monet. And then as he started travelling, he started to become influenced by a new painter, someone called Henry Matisse. And we can see some different images from both Kandinsky on the left and Matisse on the right. What do you notice about these paintings? Are there any similarities in them or have they still got huge differences? And how, compared to his earlier work, has Kandinsky's style changed? So pause the video and have a little look at these images and think back to the earlier images and think about the answers to those questions. Now, while he was travelling, studying and painting, Kandinsky began to develop ideas about the ways in which music and painting were related. He and many other artists thought the colours and shapes they painted were a bit like language, and they could describe ideas and feelings or tell a story. And this image that you can see on the screen at the moment is from a book that influenced Kandinsky called Thought Forms. What do you think this picture is actually trying to show us? Have a look very closely at it. What images and aspects can you see and what do you think the message that painter is trying to get is telling us so pause the video and just have a little ponder about that for a few moments now this picture shows what the illustrator pictured while listening to music by a french composer called charles gounod now did you think it showed something different or did you think it was going to be sound coming out of it? Because if we look, we can see an image that looks to me like a cathedral. When you listen to music, does it have a similar effect on you? Does it paint pictures in your mind? Think about the difference between music where it's just instruments, so maybe some classical music, or maybe something more modern with singing involved with it. So what what impact does the music have on your imagination? Do you see these images suddenly dancing in front of you? Pause the video and just ponder that just for a moment. Think about sort of the effect that music has on you when you're closing your eyes and just thinking about music and ignoring the rest of the world. Now, soon after the end of the First World War, Kandinsky went to Germany to study and teach art in the city of Weimar, and here he continued to develop his style and techniques. And if we look, we can see two of his paintings that he painted at that time. What can you see? What do you think these are images of? Do the patterns and shapes remind you of anything? So just have a little look at these pictures for a moment and think about what the painter, what Kandinsky is trying to tell us through these images. Kandinsky's paintings were becoming increasingly abstract. Now, abstract art does not show places, people or objects realistically, like they're a photograph. Instead, they use simple forms, patterns and colours. They can remind us of real things. So Kandinsky often painted abstract boats, hills and mountains. But the idea is people see things differently. 
So when you look at the abstract art, you're going to see something which must be I don't see. So the person sitting next to you might think the pattern shapes and colours in this picture show something completely different to what I might see. So when you take a look at this picture, what do you think this image is actually representing? So this was Kandinsky's Black and Violet from 1923. So pause the video and try and tell the story of this image. What is Kandinsky trying to tell us? In 1933, the Nazi party came to power in Germany, and they approved of art that was very traditional and showed strong, healthy, powerful German people, like in the statues that you can see. Now, these statues were from the 1936 Berlin Olympics, and the idea was they showed the ideal bodies of men and women in the opinions of Hitler and the Nazis. The Nazis, however, disapproved of abstract art such as Kandinsky's, so they banned it. Only artworks approved by Hitler and his ministers of culture were allowed to be created, sold or displayed in Nazi Germany. Why do you think art like Kandinsky's, the abstract art, was banned by the Nazis? Think back to those statues we saw from the 1936 Berlin Olympics. What sort of artwork was it that the Nazis liked, and does the abstract art of Kandinsky follow this same pattern? So at this time, Kandinsky fled to Paris, France, and he eventually became a French citizen and lived there for the rest of his life. So we can see the journey that Kandinsky had. He started his style as an impressionist using the influence of Monet, and then he moved into the world of abstract, where he started taking the influences from different artists. And what you're now going to try and do is you're going to try and paint or sketch an abstract art in a style similar to Kandinsky. So you're going to be thinking about how to think about your forms and your shapes and your patterns. Maybe you're going to be drawing an image with people involved, where you could try using triangles and lines to draw them in abstract abstract styles. Maybe you're going to be doing some landscapes and here you could use simple circles and lines to describe the birds, the clouds, the planets, the hills, the mountains or the buildings that come into your mind. So how simple can you make your sketches? This is one where we're not looking at putting lots and lots of detail into it, but you're thinking about those shapes and those forms and those patterns to make you create that image where in your head it's going to be exactly what you see. What colours are you going to use? Are your colours going to represent your moods and your attitude towards something? So now think about this idea of abstract art and give it a go yourself. I look forward to seeing your artworks.